Today we are going to explore wave folding. Wave folding is a deceptively simple technique for creating complex waveforms out of simple building blocks. In this Maxim SP patch, I'm using a sine wave oscillator and the resulting sine wave uh, as the basis for distortion, clipping, wrapping, and folding in order to chaotically, unpredictably twist these into new kinds of sounds. This wave folding algorithm adds new harmonics and new partials to the sound, making it dirty or metallic or very rich and fat in unpredictable ways. This results in a very cool sound and is and can be the basis for a lot of cool synthesizers, uh, interactive modules, as well as sound installations. So let's see how we can implement this. If I want to wave fold, I need two things. I need a wave and I need a way to fold those waves. So I'm going to start by creating a cycle tilde object, right? The sine wave oscillator, and I'm going to give it a very low frequency. 0.5, right? 0.5 hertz. Now, we are not going to be able to hear whatever comes out of this uh, because our ears can pick up sounds that are around, let's say, starting from 20 hertz or so, and this is way below that. But we can visualize it using live.scope tilde, one of my favorite objects. Still, for uh, eventual usage, I will create an easy deck tilde. Later, my audio is going to go in there. And I'm going to use the easy deck tilde as a toggle for when my patch is locked. And here is our beautiful sine wave oscillator, very slowly oscillating. Now, the idea of wave folding is based on the idea of stretching a waveform, amplifying it so much that normally, it would clip in a wanted or unwanted way. Right now, this wave fits live.scope perfectly but it, because it's made to be that wave, right? This wave is oscillating between a value of one and minus one. This results in an amplitude of one, which represents the loudest sound or digital system can make without unwanted distortion. Right. But if I want to, if I'm feeling adventurous, I can create a signal multiplication object, asterisk tilde, and give it for now an argument of one. So I'm multiplying the signal by one. And then I can create a float number box by pressing F and connect that to the second inlet of this multiplication object and multiply it by 0.5. And now we can see this waveform is going a bit higher and a bit lower, right? So going higher than one, it's going less than minus one. Normally, we would not want this, but this creates a unique opportunity. This creates the opportunity for our wave folding algorithm, right? And the idea of wave folding is this. What if I take these values, right, that oscillate now between a value that is higher than one and lower than minus one, and each time I go higher than one, I instead bounce the values back uh, to a value less than one. And each time I am going less than minus one, I'm bouncing these values back up to a value higher than minus one. This will make more sense visually. The object I'm going to use is called Pong tilde, right? I think the naming comes from um, either uh, the old video game Pong or maybe ping pong, table tennis. Now, now that I think of it, I'm pretty sure the video game's name Pong also comes from table tennis, but that has nothing to do with this video and what we are trying to achieve. What we are trying to achieve is wave folding through Pong tilde. And Pong tilde, tilde will need three arguments, the folding mode that I will leave at zero for now, and later we will see what this does, and what my boundaries are. And as I've just been describing, we are going to Pong things around between minus one and plus one. So look at what happens when I put Pong between my oscillator and live.scope. We in fact have some folding right now, if you can see and or visualize it, when my waveform is supposed to go above one, it is instead bouncing back. And when it is supposed to go below uh, minus one, it is bouncing back up. And the more I increase the amplification of my original signal, the more pronounced this bouncing back is going to be. In fact, if I go above a certain threshold, the bounce backs are by themselves going to bounce back, which is going to be very strange. 
right? And before we hear this, there's just one more thing to consider, this zero argument uh, right next to Pong tilde. Now, what we are doing is folding, but Pong tilde is also capable of doing something called wrap. It's going to wrap the signals around. So if instead of a zero, if this is one, what is going to happen is that if the sound wave, if the val value at that moment, if the signal is going higher than one, it is going to wrap around to my lower bound, minus one, I'm going to continue from there. And similarly, if a signal is going less than minus one, it's going to wrap back around and go uh, jump back to one and start going that down from there. In practice, this results in waveforms that are a bit more jagged. Both these techniques are going to add more harmonics and partials to the sound. It's going to make it more dirty. Um, but uh, this is going to be a bit dirtier sounding if that is what you are going for. For now, though, I'll go back to my regular fold and I'm actually going to start trying to hear this. So let's change our sine wave oscillator to a frequency that is more audible something like 220, right? That is a low A sound. And let's take the result of Pong tilde. Let's plug that into live.gain tilde, right? Uh, that is a volume control object that is incredibly useful. And let's plug the output of that into EasyDAC tilde. And there it is, a beautiful low A sound. I certainly love sine waves. They just sound so pure, so beautiful, and you can do so many things with them, such as what we are about to do to it right now. So let me now increase this multiplication of my original signal. And as you can hear, we are getting more and more harmonics. Now, this is beautiful. I can go as high as I want. I can multiply the signal by 219 and I don't get any clipping because Pong is making sure the signals stay above and below minus one as needed. And I love scrolling around this uh, wave folding index or whatever you want to call it that just is very unpredictable but really beautiful in its own right. And this you can use in all kinds of sound design or uh, synthesizer purposes and it's going to be super fun to play around with. Now what can we do with this practically though? And uh, I don't think this is going to be a long video. I hope this is not going to be a long video because there are two more things I want to try here, right? Uh, two more ideas to build on top of this. And first of all, I would love to try something a bit sequence right? like, right? So what if instead of me doing this manually, I just snapped uh, to different uh, ampl amplitudes or amplifications for my sine wave at a very uh, repetitive rhythmical pattern. Well, let's try to do that. And to do this in a signal-based world, uh, we can use a beautiful object called rand tilde, which Max describes as a band-limited random signal. And without any arguments, Rand is not going to output anything. But if I give Rand an argument like, I don't know, five, it's going to come alive, right? And what is happening is when Rand is set to five, five times per second, I, this signal is going to a random value between minus one and plus one, right? When Rand is five, I'm getting five different values per second that are between minus one and plus one, and the signal is traversing from one to the other in exactly one second. Now, this could be useful for semi-random volks of information. I can scale that so that I'm going between different amplitudes in my wave folding patch. Now, as I've said, this goes between minus one and plus one because this is also an oscillator, and like I said, a lot of oscillators do this, but I can simply use my favorite object, scale tilde, um, right, and I can say that well, the input is going between minus one and plus one, but I want to scale this. So now it goes between, I don't know, 25 or 20 to 100. I'm going to put my signal here, and instead of sending a float number, I'm going to send this, the result of this, the signal that represents the amount of amplification into here. Right, and if you think about it, this is starting to feel a bit like uh, AM synthesis, if you are comfortable and familiar with that subject. 
Anyway, this is what it sounds like. Alright, not bad, but I'm noticing that this is really harsh. There are a lot of high frequencies, sometimes a bit more than I would like to, you know, experience. And I can verify this by using uh, the spectroscope tilde objects. Very useful object for these kinds of purposes. We can just plug in the sound even without hearing it because live that gain is off. And we can see that all of our frequency bands, right? All of our frequencies are very strongly occupied. So maybe to soften the blow of wave falling, we can apply a filter. I'm going to use a cross tilde, a crossover filter, and I'm going to use uh, 2500 as my cutoff frequency. And now, even before we hear it, you can see there is a very clear fall off and this sounds a bit better. I can even change rent to something higher, like 10. Beautiful. It's like we have this chaotic sequencer that we are using to manipulate and uh, destroy and wave fault this sine wave oscillator. All right, that's idea one. So what else can we do? Well, we can put this away for now, go back to our uh, float, there we go, or float input, and we can try to turn this into a some kind of synthesizer-like synthesizer thing, right? And here's my idea. I'm going to use my lovely uh, ADSR envelope. Right? I'm going to generate an amplitude envelope. I'm going to do this with the ADSR object. Uh, this will take four arguments, right? The ADSR values. If you're not familiar with the concept of an ADSR envelope, well, we are describing how the amplitude of a sound evolves through time. So. Let's give it a sharp attack. In 10 milliseconds, the sound starts and goes to its highest amplitude. Well, let's make it 25. I'm going to decay over 50 milliseconds to a sustained level of uh, 0.8, and I'm going to release things over, I don't know, 300 milliseconds, right? I am also going to realize that I'm going to trigger these envelopes very quickly and to make sure that there is no overlap, I am going to, let's see, Enable the re-trigger, I believe. No, it's not re-trigger. Ah, there we go. Legato. I'm going to set legato to one. Uh, and so I'm going to enable legato mode, which is going to make sure that the envelope will not drop down to zero in the event of a re-trigger while the envelope is active. I'm also going to, let's see, give it a max sustain. Actually, no, I, I don't want that. Legato is by itself enough, I believe. Well, let's try it out. ADSR is going to also output some kind of signal and I can trigger this with uh, by sending it the message one. If I lock the patch. No, if I do this, it's going to go on forever. So I'm going to make sure max sustain is also at zero. I think that is going to work. There we go, yes. This is in fact what we needed. ADSR set to uh, set for the attributes, legato set to one and max sustain set to zero. And now we have this little button we can press to trigger the entire envelope, right? And if I press it before it's over, it just continues from where it's left up and uh, goes back up. All right, so this envelope is something I can multiply by my sound source, right? Kind of like my oscillator, which in this case is Pong. Right, so I'm going to use yet another multiplication object, right? Signal multiplication, asterisk tilde, but this time it's going to be multiplied by whatever comes out of ADSR. And currently that is a value of zero. So even if I turn my sound up, I'm not going to hear anything. But whenever I press this one, I'm going to hear a sound event, an amplitude envelope just uh, applying itself to the sound source. And now having this kind of a button to make this happen, I can incorporate a bit of randomness. I can create an actual button. I can connect it to the message box containing one, but I can also make a new random object and I can give it the range attribute, which again, let's set it between 25 and 100. Let's also give those dots so they are float numbers. I think it's going to be really cool. 
So now each time I click this button, I'm not only going to trigger this uh, amplitude envelope triggering my sound event, I will also give the wave folding algorithm a new uh, amplitude for it to wave fold itself around. And it will sound like this. We can even go a bit higher, right? Instead of 100, why don't we make it go all the way up to 500? And there you go. Beautiful sound, a really interesting way of just taking a simple thing like a sine wave and just folding and wrapping it around until we have some really interesting applications, really interesting sounds. And this could be used uh, for building a synthesizer or a synthesizer module, as I've been saying, or maybe as a part of a some kind of a generative sound design uh, installation or interactive system, where it could be the basis for a lot of interesting sounds, music and musical narratives. I hope you have a lot of fun with this. I hope you create a lot of weird sounds with this. And as always, thank you for watching.